Now, a man has been arrested after injuring at least 11 people in Dijon just hours after a night attack on police officers. Nathaniel Amos Sanson has been following the story. France is a country familiar with social and political conflicts, with Islamophobia becoming an increasing part of the national political discourse. And in the two separate attacks over the weekend, which occurred in two separate French cities, this discourse is likely to be compounded. On Saturday, a French convert to Islam attacked the police station at the French city of Tours, stabbing and wounding three officers before being shot dead by police. The attacker was identified as Bertrand de Hazabonio, a Burundi-born French national Speaking after the attack on Saturday, the French interior minister said that he was not someone the government had flagged up as a risk of attack. Then yesterday, a drive-by attack took place in the city of Dijon, with 11 civilians injured and two of them in critical condition where a driver slammed his car into groups of pedestrians in five parts of the city before being apprehended by police. The driver's names and motives have not yet been revealed. While nothing has been reported that links these attacks, both attackers were reported to have shouted Allahu Akbar, leading to many media reports characterizing them as Islamic attacks. The French government has stressed that they still do not know the full motives of the attackers. Speaking at the scene of the second attack in as many days, the Interior Minister of France again urged people not to jump to conclusions. Les Français sont soudés. Ils sont déterminés à ce que la République fasse bloc face à ceux qui prêchent la haine. Chacun sait en France que la menace est réelle. Il faut l'anticiper pour la contrer. Et c'est ce que font quotidiennement tous les services de police et de renseignement dont je veux saluer ici une nouvelle fois solennellement l'engagement sans faille. A number of such lone wolf attacks have occurred in France in recent years, at a time when a faltering economy and the rise of the Front National have pushed issues of national identity up the political agenda, and if French society becomes increasingly frightened of further attacks, anti-Islam and Islamophobic views could become more entrenched. Nathaniel Amosansom, The Report. Now, joining me to discuss events uh, in France, Bade Lejmi, an anti-racist activist from the country. Bajer, can I come to you and ask, now, we've heard a lot of this sort of rhetoric on terror measures uh, to counter what we've seen, but is this sort of rhetoric that we're seeing actually um, serving to demonize the Muslim community there? Yes, um, anti-terrorism has been for many years in France, since the 90s in order to put pressure on the Muslim community and control it and sometimes decide um, what, what the faith will be and even our leaders. So it's not new in France. What's new is that now we have uh, openly Islamophobic uh, speeches and radical Islamophobic um, in, in the media, in the mainstream media, like Eric Zemmour, with speech is uh, comparable to, to some Nazi, Nazi speech when we speak about deportation, frankly, and he has been fired only by one media. The others supported him, like the Figaro. And uh, in the in the other side, we have some new kind of uh, violent attack from individuals uh, with um, a dark, dark past, but still they are Muslim and or they present themselves as, as so and they use Islam as a justification of their violent behavior. Um, and these two things are like putting more and more pressure on Muslim. Uh, they are kind of, um, they feel obliged to position themselves against and to different themselves against these terrorist attacks, but in the same time, doing this, they make it easier for the politician to um, to discriminate them more. So it's it's a very difficult now situation for the Muslim community in France. Now you mentioned the sacking of Eric Zemmour. Um, now his this sacking has caused a free speech row, saying that actually he should be allowed to speak on television. Yeah, actually, there are kind of an ideology uh, in France that say that uh, we we can't uh, ever speak against minorities. There, there is a dictatorship of the minorities, and we shall be able to to free speech. But the free speech is only on one side, 
uh, let's take even if if I, I'm even a Muslim like um, a very moderate reformist like Tarek Ramadan is forbidden in many medias in France. So I think that the one, the free speech rhetoric is only a rhetoric. I mean, it's a rhetoric only to defend racist speeches, uh, stigmatizing Muslim. It's not real conviction. It's not a real uh, defense of the of uh, free speech. And uh, free speech in itself has limits, uh, its, boundary, its boundaries, its uh, the responsibility not to disseminate violence and hatred and to push to violent uh, acts in the society. And I, th I think that violent, very violent Islamophobic speeches uh, are um, one of the sources of terrorism, actually. Well, there must be some progression, right? Eric Zemo was um, sacked for, uh, and not allowed to appear on one of the television channels. One, only one. Only one of uh, the many, many media he appears on. And he's not, uh, no, he's not alone. Uh, we have been organize, um, organ organizing um, an event was called uh, the Yabo Awards during many years when we awarded people for their racist speeches. speeches. And Eric Zemmour was only one of the guy, the bandit that was awarded for his uh, racist speeches. And um, there are many others who have been also, but he is the only one now, after almost more than 10 years of uh, violent, Islamophobic, racist, anti-working class speeches, uh, sexist and so on, only after 10 years, he has been expelled from one media only. So it's not really, he has been sacked, it's, it's, a, it's news only for the people who are not really, I think, um, very aware of the situation here in France, uh, which is not, not a, I'm not optimistic about it, and I don't think that the sacking of one individual from one media will change, uh, will change how something. Has, how uh, has the rise of the Front National uh, impacted on, on Islamophobia or anti-Islamic hatred in the country? I think it's I think it's the opposite. I think it's a normalization of Islamophobia that makes the national front for national uh, more acceptable in society and the political sphere. And um, the 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 only thing that impeach uh, the Front National to gain power it is anti-republican and anti-Semitic um, rhetoric, and not its racist and Islamophobic rhetoric, which kind of accepted now. And Eric Zemmour, a speech is way more violent than actually than Marine Le Pen of the Front National. So um, I don't. I, I think now that the Front National has been mainstreamed. <laughs> And the funny thing uh, right now in France is that now we are some people are accusing Marine Le Pen of being too close to people like Dieudonné or or, or other um, people who are too critics of uh, Zionism. Uh, that means that now Marine Le Pen is less accused of Islamophobia or racism than of uh, being close to uh, non-white people who are accused of uh, being anti-Semitic. So um, now the National Front is very profiting, um, is uh, winning from this situation, uh, actually. And uh, I don't see how we can impeach them to gain power in the next elections. I mean, there's been a rise of anti-Islamic hatred. We saw the marches in Germany. We've seen what's happening in France and so, and, and so forth in Britain also. Does there need to be a, a unified strategy towards anti-Islamic hatred, like there is in the US, for instance, with organizations like CARE? Yeah, there is many initi initiatives to, uh, to counter this uh, racism, but we have taken too, too much time to organize. Now it's... Uh, almost um, impeaching um, the worst that we are doing. Uh, so there is um, an, an organization like CCIF, Coordination contre l'Islamophobie en France, and other organizations like uh, the one I'm, I'm into. We are producing um, some cultural content uh, that intend to deconstruct prejudices, and uh, other organizations are making events, uh, demonstrations, and so on. Uh, but now the fact is uh, we are divided, we are very few, we're not as organized, organized as we should be. Uh, so even with the strong lobby pressure, even stronger lobby pressure and so on, uh, we'll need more time, more energy, more money and more um, 
conscience of the Muslim that we need to do this. It's not something uh, additional. It's something that's crucial, needed for our life. I mean, um, and this uh, understanding um, is not um, is not really um, as deep as it could be. Uh, it should be uh, in France and I think in other countries in Europe, except. This, except I think UK, which is kind of different, but um, France with the, um, the biggest European Muslim community, which is also one of the less organized and even the biggest organization like the UOIF are not very militant about this. Um, their strategy is still to, they think that they can integrate um, every part of the society, uh, like the Muslim Brotherhood strategy, uh, they came from, but uh, in France, uh, this strategy showed, uh, I think, now um, its failure. Well, thank you so much, Badr, for joining us on the program. We do have to follow um, what's happening in France. Uh, but that's all we have time for in tonight's program. Uh, so I want to thank all of my guests for joining us and thank you at home for watching. Remember, you can keep up with us on Twitter by following our conversations using hashtag the report and at Islam Channel. You can catch previous episodes on our playlist on YouTube at forward slash Islam Channel TV. But for now, we'll leave you with some scenes from a children's home in Thailand, 10 years on from the deadly tsunami that swept across the Indian Ocean on Boxing Day. Kindness House Children's Home has been working to assist families and 22 children who had been orphaned by that disaster. Today, the foundation has become a permanent home with only two children directly affected by the tsunami remaining at the orphanage. Until tomorrow, good night. I don't know.